So you will be practicing or working on lots of sun salutations. Surya Namaskar. Surya Namaskars, even though it's quite a sort of like a more modern concept of practices, and I guess one of the reasons I say the modern practice because the way we have explored Surya Namaskar sun salutations now is kind of has become like a key practice. So all the vinyasas, all the things we see now, what people are doing out there in name of yoga, they are extended variations of sun salutations or the Surya Namaskars. But like in the authentic, the ancient, the classical hat yoga, classical astanga, raj yoga or the Hindu culture, the way they used to see the sun salutations, Surya Namaskars, as the invoking or greeting or saluting to that source energy and to me you know when i start thinking some of the ideas some of the concepts how not only in hinduism but if you look into like the greek history or if you look into like any sort of old cultures we worshipped various sources various parts of the nature because i guess when people did not have all these amazing ideas and concepts the way we see now we, we got all these beautifully pictures, beautiful, di- you know, the way we, we describe the divine and all these things. While people were struggling or fighting to survive, to live, they kind of looked at the sources from where the life was coming from, what was providing them the food, what was providing them the shelter or the energy, they started to worship them. So the sun becomes the one of the source, the source of the light, source of the energy, which makes things to grow, which makes things to come to life, which makes seeds to, to sprout, which makes even the human life to evolve, to grow, to be able to act, to be able to respond. And along with the sun energy, then we have the earth, the mother earth, because the mother earth allows that energy to manifest. So you can see the sun as the seed, and then the earth as the mother where the energy can manifest. And that's why in Hatha Yoga we have the concepts of Loma Viloma, or we have the concept of Shiva Sakti, we have the concept of Muscular and Feminine, we have the concept of Solar and Lunar, Surya and Chandra. So the Surya becomes the seed, and then the earth becomes the place where the seeds can manifest. So Surya provides, the sun provides us the energy, and then the earth provides us the ground, the surface, that earth material where all that energy can manifest and the life can be created, life can grow, life can sustain in, in its beautiful form. So in that way then the Hindus or the, the, the way the yogis find the way to worship, way to show or express their gratitude towards these two sources, these two sun and then the earth, the, the prana and apana or the positive and negative energy is coming together to so they start creating these various forms of simple exercises to show their gratitude to say show their love to show their respect and and worship them invoke them but simply invoking is really allowing those energies to manifest and then as you allow those energies finding the way to be grateful or to offer our gratitude because offering gratitude simply means it's kind of like the simplest virtue which can make you happy. Because if you can't offer gratitude, then everything, you it doesn't matter what you get, it's still deep inside, there is something not satisfied, something not happy. It's fighting. No, I want more. I don't like it this way. I, I would have oh, expected something different. But the minute you start offering gratitude, then you are self-contented, you are happy with the way things are unfolding, with the way things are manifesting in our life. So then the, those yogis started to find a way to create the bridge between the solar and then the, and the earth energy to find the set of practices in which we can express our gratitude to the sun. But they also say the sun energy can only manifest if there is a ground, there is earth. So if you think of all these sun salutations, you know, you're raising your hands up and then you're bringing them all the way down to touch to the mother earth. Now obviously there is a solar system we got, we talk about the solar system, but there is also a solar system in our body. This is quite quite amazing if you start thinking physiologically, physically, our body also represents the whole universe. 
there is the whole universe where all these planets all these stars and then all these creatures the various forms of life living there but actually in our body we have millions and millions of forms of life and various energy systems too we got seven you know seven chakras or the 12 chakras and 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 subtly in some of the scripts that explain that we got millions of energies energy points just like the planets and stars in the universe and then on our earth we got all these millions of various creatures but if you talk to doctors they can tell you you got millions of little creatures living on our skin too or inside our body inside our systems and if you look into the ratio wise compared to the earth what is space to be exist then really those micro cos cosmic life lives in our skin will have same sort of ratio compared to so for them your body becomes the universe too so in then we have the universal the solar system but then there is also solar system within our own body within our panch kosha within our pranic body and that we talk about the chak system of the chakras and we all know that solar plexus we have the manipur chakra the the middle center into your belly into into your stomach area which represents the sun energy the solar energy so the yogi has a two ways to look at it. the one way to actually express the gratitude to, to the higher and and respect to the mother earth to find the union to find that love for all that we taking all that happening between us all the time but the second way to also invoke and align these chakras and these energy centers with our breath and with our consciousness with our awareness and then what what has happened in last last sort of 30 or 40 years because it is so dynamic you know, the sun salutations they are beautiful they are dynamic and the energy does flow and and people who are looking for a good workout people are looking for losing a bit of weight people are looking into becoming more flexible more strong gain gain the strength gain the vitality and it it is improving everything and once you start getting into that then people explore that it it sort of expand and expand and expand so to be you know if anything in your life if you start doing it seriously and sincerely that thing will expand even if you learn how to put a seed in the ground if you become a gardener your gardening skills the way you will do it every day will change and will become more and more beautiful if you learn to be a cook and if you want to cook the same days or different dishes every day more you do it you will see the color the way you do it will change because deep inside we all are or we love to be dynamic and people who live dynamically people who have that heart to be very dynamic and that's why you know we worship lord shiva in form of his dance to dance dance performing a dance itself is some salutation it's, it's a meditation it's a way to find the freedom and that that dynamic nature that can manifest that can unfold us when we are doing something more interesting a bit more physical because because our body likes to be physical you know the two things please please remember yes we all love yoga nidra we like to sleep we like to rest we like to meditate but then also our body naturally likes to be active it likes to do the exercise and i guess in med- medical terminology we say homeostasis so in in that concept your body also does not like if you hold it in one place you start getting cramps you start getting spasms your muscles will start getting arthritis and all sorts of health problems if you don't do things we need to be active if you don't shake your hands if you don't lift your arms up and down if you don't move <coughs> your legs if you don't move your back your head your neck it will gradually suffer with many many health problems so you know there is not one way that our body like to relax our body to relax it like to actually work it like to do things so the sun salutations for yoga was one or other way to find a dynamic practice a dynamic performance using our physical body as an instrument 
to play with our breath so the breath need to be very deep and that's that's where to me the minute we lose that breath into the practice it's not really yoga anymore so the sun salutations the key of sun salutations doesn't matter how you practice it is a conscious and deep rhythmic breath so we do need to follow some sort of 6 6 or 8 8 minimum breathing to use the term i am doing my yoga practice i'm doing my hatha yoga i'm following sun salutations or surya namaskars so the breath is the first key the second key is your conscious dynamic flow or meditative movement in 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 the practice you doing so in all old kind of traditional scriptures they describe you know you expose your body to the sun and then going through different positions you exposing those points to the light to the morning rising sun ideally if you can find a place you should practice sun salutations naked once you learn the practice then you find your space if you can if you have some sort of space without you know without being exposed to other people which you don't want to or i don't know <laughs> but if you can make a space then the best way to practice sun salutations finding few minutes somewhere nice and quiet in solitude and i guess that's why solitude the place where you have peace place where you have no one intrude intruding into your senses is the best place to practice and then you exposing different points so if you think you raise your arms up you exposing your face and your forehead to make it the bindu the point to allow the light to allow the solar to the bio rhythms to flood into it then you opening into the bhujanga or the kokila you exposing your heart to the light or you exposing your throat you wish to the to the light I guess now it's quite a good point you mentioning here I think before I came here I used to think only one way okay I used to think the sun salutation should be done in the morning but when we look at our lifestyle here especially half of the year in the winter months even I find it a good struggle to get out and actually look at sun and do some sun salutations because by the time sun comes out we all are ready we need to get in our car to get on with the day to day tasks maybe some of us got the kids to run to school others got the job to get to so there is not really way for active working people to do sun salutations in the morning so if you can't do that as lord krishna clearly says in bhagavad gita that it's better to do than not doing things so if we can't expose ourselves to the morning sun then yes it's better to actually expose into the evening to do it instead of saying like okay i can't do in morning so i'm not doing in the evening because that's what people say and i guess there are lots of rules when the yogis were talking you know hundreds and thousands of years back they made the rules they put the things together in their context because their lifestyle was different to the lifestyle we live in you know the yogis talk about okay you can do the midnight pranayama but lots of you if you come and ask me you know if you come and ask me can i do my prana midnight i would say it's better you sleep so you are ready to go and see the see your patients all day and every day so those concepts you know you got to think quite rationally that what is appropriate for me and what i can do so doing is better than not doing anything so if people can't be exposed to the morning sun then yeah, let's do the evening sun and i guess the yogis did not mention the rest of the day because it gets maybe too hot and that's again we talking back into the indian context so to me even if you can expose our hair to yourself between like 9 10 11 12 12 or up to 11 it's not really that but it's quite quite nice actually to be in the sun maybe between like 11 and 5 o'clock it does get quite quite hot and then you might get sun burns and things so that's that's kind of more practical way to think that is it harmful for me to be exposed into the sun or or do i enjoy it so yeah you can think different times of the day like when where is the right time when i my body can actually take it and when my body is if i expose it i will get more problems than the benefit and ideally you know if you can expose it without 
using all those sun lotions and creams that's where you really get the kind of real benefit because the sun creams the minute you put them you are also creating some barriers between your skin and the sunlight but again i'm not saying they would not benefit you still it's better to do it that way than not doing it if because if that's the only time left but otherwise yes if you can expose yourself without those creams and sun lotions so it's like sort of i would say early mornings and then the late afternoons are here is quite quite a good time to expose yourself to the sun but you know even if that time you can't do it then you go to do it when you can do it you know if someone gets back home seven o'clock and say like oh this is the only time i got to do practice still it's better to do them than not doing at all so the sun salutations in old and ancient time that's how they used to do it so the finding the space of quietness directly exposing yourself to the rising sun and we can also add the setting sun now so to either end and i guess they're taking the rising and setting sun because that's the most beautiful time when the sunlight is very pleasant and it gives it, does, it will not really give you much of sunburns because it's the heat is not in that peak and all the ultraviolet all the, the harmful radiations are quite less compared to like when the sun comes right at the top and as you going through the practices through the sets the vinyasa the movements exposing your body or even focusing your mind at at various centers various chakras which again i think to me in sun salutation is very easy to work out if you facing to sun you can simply look at yourself what you exposing to the sun which parts of the body are actually looking or gazing gazing towards the sun where the sunlight is directly touching your skin and those points can be the focus points as you going through the surya namaskar so sun salutations and the benefits of surya namaskar sun salutations are really i guess you can talk as much as you like to talk about the benefits you can begin with a very physical body you know it's going to get rid of all the toxins all the crystals building up into your muscles as you moving you flowing and you start reusing all the muscles maybe not been used in any form of exercise in your day to day life so those muscles will regain their health their vitality their their functions will improve their flexibility and and also the endurance will improve too and as that improving then the blood circulation will become better because quite amazing when you going through over and over into the practice what you doing you are changing all the metabolic reactions that everything is speeding up because you going through vigorously through the practice with the breath with the consciousness so your cells your muscles need to speed up all that breakdown to make to produce more energy for you and this is one of so one of the amazing thing if you do feel okay i like to lose a bit of weight then do between sort of 10 and 20 30 sun salutations and fast for another 2 hours after your sun salutation practice don't eat straight after your practice fast drink lots of water and fast for another couple of hours every day and and you you will lose significant amount of weight in in few weeks you will see the huge difference because you're leaving your body into that speeded up into the hyper state of metabolic breakdown functions and have a sort of relaxation don't do the yoga nidra So if you do seriously if you fancy you know losing lots of weight with sun salutations doing them maybe do a couple of minutes breathing it's nice to actually take energy back in and then just get on with what you need to be doing and fast for another 2 hours So sun salutations go help reducing the the weight and if the weight is being reduced then obviously it improves the health and well-being of your heart or or the diabetes the sugar level everything will come down arthritis it can be amazingly preventive practice once people got it then then they will need to learn it in a much more gentler and kinder way to be able to do it because if someone got arthritis in their fingers and you trying to do lots of flow back and forth on the hands 
or maybe shoulders are suffering so you got to have that thing in your mind but otherwise again preventive and managing level it's it's amazing practice for any sort of problems regarding your health of your muscles your joints and heart and and weight and and and, and many other things so the health benefits are as huge as you can take them and and the slight change in the practice can make a huge difference So there's many ways to use sun salutations in your day to day in your daily practice from very health benefits to all the way up to the kundalini or the chakra awakening and that that's what the yogis used to do or offering or greetings or salutations to the sun 